listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Thanks for joining me for today's episode with special guest, Jamie Laronis. We spoke specifically about the upcoming February 2024 Travel and Adventure Show in Washington, D.C., and more generally about travel, credit cards, and loyalty programs. Jamie is a travel industry analyst specializing in airline operations, loyalty programs, and reward travel. He owns The Forward Cabin and social media channels with over 35,000 followers. Currently, he writes about and serves as an expert on American Airlines for Upgraded Points with over 21 million annual readers. Before today's episode, here are some quick announcements. I'll be speaking at multiple events in 2024, including the Travel and Adventure Show in February 2024, taking place in Washington, D.C. with Frequent Traveler University. I'll also be speaking at the San Antonio Award Travel 101 meetup in April of 2024, and the Miles and Points and Gambling event, ZorkFest, November 2024 in Las Vegas. I hope to see you at these events. On with today's episode. All right. Thank you for joining me today, Jamie Larunis. Hello. How are you? All right. Very good. We're recording today, January 8th, 2024. A lot of new goals for the new year. What we're here to talk about is the Travel and Adventure Show in Washington, D.C. in February of 2024. Frequent Travel University has been happening now for about the last 10 or so years. Uh, We host conferences all over the country. We try to do multiple conferences per year, kind of on both ends of the country and, and sometimes hitting the middle tool to have folks learn about miles, points, credit card programs, loyalty programs, uh, and how to leverage those. So we've got sessions on, you know, how to use your Alaska miles and how to get cheap rental cars and, you know, what's the best credit card for this and that type of thing. Try to bring in expert speakers in the uh, loyalty and miles and points uh, space. If you've been kind of following the travel world, you've, you're probably familiar with some of the speakers that we uh, try to bring in. And it's just kind of a fun-filled day of sessions. Uh, we call it, you know, Frequent Travel University, but don't think of it like a college class. There's no tests or anything like that. But we've got some great speakers that come in, rotate, and, and give their knowledge. And of course, you're allowed to ask questions and that type of stuff. And we partner with, uh, for some of these events, we're partnering with the Travel and Adventure Show. And they're a series of big, giant expos. They rotate around the country. They've got about eight of them, I think, or so per year in major cities. And uh, they've got all sorts of different booths about traveling across the world to different destinations. So you'll find booths on Australia and Bali and the Grand Canyon and, you know, London and that kind of thing. Uh, And you can go down to the different booths, hear different speakers around the uh, expo area, and just kind of get a taste of places and things you can do. And so our goal is kind of to teach you about how to get there, teach you about where to stay, teach you all those kind of fun miles and points type topics. And then if you head over to the Travel Adventure Show, you can start to learn about maybe things you can do there, places you want to visit, right, that type of thing. So that's coming up on February 24th for the actual Frequent Traveler University. And then all weekend will be the travel and adventure show at the um, Washington, D.C. Convention Center. Very good. So something for beginners, something for advanced miles and points people, and I imagine something for a little bit of everyone. If someone wants to come with a family member, a friend, significant other, even if they're not in miles and points, they'll still have something to benefit from at this event. Yeah, exactly. We try to cater to all tastes and many different airlines out there, many different hotels, many different credit cards. And so try to have different sessions on each of those. Or if you don't find it at this one, we've got an upcoming event in May in Seattle, Washington. So if you don't find it in D.C., hopefully we'll hit it on the other end. So we try to change the topics, try to change the speakers to make it interesting. But yeah, just as you said, we've got a lot of new folks that come, I would say, Uh, you know, maybe a good 60% of the people that come to an FTU are brand new people and they kind of walk in the door having no idea what to expect. And and I try to tell folks that it's not really about the sessions. And sure, we put on great sessions and we have some great speakers lined up and that type of thing. But honestly, that's not why you should attend an FTU. A lot of it's about the networking. It's what happens after five o'clock when you're all at the hotel bar or you're grabbing pizza somewhere or out to dinner, whatever it is. 
it's those connections that really make an FTU valuable for. So yeah, bring your spouse, bring your, your kids. Uh, everyone can benefit off of miles and points. And in fact, you'll hear a lot of the speakers talk about things where you kind of need that other person, right? You need your spouse, you need your, your uh, kids, whatever, to kind of leverage different, different programs, different facets of these uh, elite tiers and credit cards and stuff like that. So honestly, the more the merrier, the easier it'll be to, to help you out to travel better. So you get booths in the morning and booze in the evening, probably. <laughs> exactly. I guess that's a good way of putting it. Maybe maybe we ought to start you off drunk in the morning, but I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of the way it's going for now. The alcohol may or may not be free. I can't say, but we'll figure out at a later time. Right, exactly. That That's more, more to come on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and thanks for including me as a speaker. I'll be speaking on staying organized with miles and points because this is a common question. How do you keep track of all of this? How do you keep organized? Oh, this sounds so much. It's so complicated and I can't possibly ever do it. So how, how do you find yourself organized with Miles and Points and why are you in the hobby? How did you find all this? I will admit to you, and perhaps I shouldn't since this is going out into the World Wide Web here, but I am not the most organized person when it comes to Miles and Points. And, you know, you should see my phone and my computer just notes, you know, and, and Apple <laughs> notes and whatever on my thing, different checklists, right? Did I use this credit? Did I, or the other, just before the end of the new year, right? I'm running through this credits that I use my Amex Platinum $200 fine hotels credit. Oh, no, I didn't. I got to book a Tell, right you know that kind of stuff so some of the stuff comes down to last minute oh crap uh and i gotta figure that stuff out so needless to say i will actually be sitting in on your session to figure Ooh. out some different ways of of doing it um, <laughs> and, and, and and i'm the first person to admit i'll probably listen to you and then still not do anything that oh, you tell no. me to do because we're, we're, we're good at, we're gonna I'm, put it in the right direction <laughs> right exactly I'm, I'm, I'm a very disorganized person no i mean in, in all seriousness um you know i got started in the miles and points kind of game i would say in college uh so that was over 10 years ago about 15 or so years ago kind of wanting to leverage going places when i had days off and i purposely kind of planned my college classes so i'd have you know monday wednesday and friday off and so i'd cram all my classes into tuesday and thursday and luckily i actually went to college just south of washington dc and so it was a great jumping off point you know with the good airports that are here uh, and good fares and i just kind of wanted to leverage things from there i'd been reading you know a number of blogs as many people do uh ben schlopping's one mile at a time i remember was kind of my go-to blog at the time looking at different fares and destinations and where ben was traveling and that kind of stuff and and that kind of sparked some interest and you know of course from there it, it blossomed into getting different credit cards and and then you know wanting to become a high end diamond at the time now it's globalist and you know once the bug sort of bites you um, there's no turning back that sort of blossomed into helping uh, Tommy Danielson kind of oversees the FTU and, and helping him with a number of projects. And so I do a lot of stuff now in that miles and space. I actually write for upgradedpoints.com, which is a site that uh, deals with credit cards and hotels and airlines and kind of putting out a lot of how to guides to the uh, to the world. So we try not to leave you hanging. It's a lot of step by step. You know, here's what you got to do first. Here's what you got to do second. Uh, and so I'm, I'm proud of the work that we do over there. But yeah, that's that's kind of how I think I got started. You found out that the answer to everything is more credit cards. That is always the answer to everything <laughs> is, is, is what's the next sign up bonus? What's what am I missing out on? Uh, I don't know how many credit cards I have. I think it's too Ooh. many at this point. <laughs> prob, prob, oh, I don't know if we could have too many. I'm not yeah. sure. I, I'm, I'm sitting on about 40 at the moment, and I've canceled oh. several. I, I so think it, you, it, you've got me beat for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was just at the Cheesecake Factory yesterday using my American Express Gold Card uh -huh. $10 dining credit. So I'm knocking out these monthly goals these yearly goals early so it's yep it's all good and I, I think people can get intimidated by the hobby oh there's so much going on oh it sounds like so much effort but what i suggest to people starting with this or maybe intermediate like start small scale up over time you'll learn the benefits and the cards you have don't just go taking on a huge goal at the start start small and, and build up yeah for sure i mean i remember when i was first getting started into this game i made plenty of mistakes i you know i got several cards where i realistically couldn't meet the sign up bonus on on several of them and i got cards that you know was kind of more for aspirational spending and you know my income sort of didn't match what what i should have been putting onto these cards and so you know i made some missteps uh you know very early on and 
and I think that was kind of just, you know, you see this whole world out there, you see this whole opportunity, you see all these people flying in Lufthansa first class and staying at these Park Hyatt's and whatnot. And of course, you just, you want everything, right? But you got to start <laughs> small, you got to do little baby steps. And kind of once you figure out those credits, once you figure out, you know, which card is good for what you build upon it, don't kind of jump head over heels. Uh, because then you're just going to get utterly confused and just kind of have to do some backtracking, which which is no fun. And you won't be alone in the hobby either. As you mentioned, there are so many websites, Facebook groups, many resources out there. And then we have this in-person event where you can learn a lot in just one weekend, build connections with people and learn from them too. Even being more advanced in this game, I still find the social, the social meetup of the event to be really good as I get tips from people we share our experiences and people will notice things that I don't or give ideas that I haven't seen or had missed. So it's about being creative, having fun with the hobby. And I think you'll transcend organic spend, the everyday spend and find creative ways to spend mm -hmm. to hit a lot of these bonuses in time. The heart of these meetups is that after hour stuff, right? You're sitting at the bar, you're sitting at dinner when you can really meet people and say, hey, did you try this yet? Hey, you know, what'd you think about this? Have you been here? Have you done this? And, and that's where that knowledge really comes because, you know, I find just kind of sitting there in a classroom style thing. It's great. Don't get me wrong, right? I can get a lot of information from it. It's when I'm actually sitting with a group of four or five other people and you're all on your laptops, you're all on your phone, you know, people are searching for different awards and showing you different websites. It's that actual immersive experience that really teaches you how to leverage these different programs because we all know these companies are, you know, making it harder, right? It's, it's hard to find award space. It's hard to to, to leverage different things and find these sweet spots and these kind of golden gooses of yesteryear. Uh, they don't really exist. But we see that the wins continue, that even though the war on happiness lurks and devaluations happen and changes happen and cashiers make up rules at grocery stores backing <laughs> you off, there's still a lot of opportunity. There's still a lot of huge wins when we're taking these trips we otherwise wouldn't pay for or traveling in style. For example, taking a cruise with MSC through the Ocean Casino status match. Um, everybody should know it's not Ocean's Casino. They put out something on social media. Don't add the S, it's just not in our building. <laughs> it was no taxes and fees. The base rate was completely comped and this was all through status matching. Right. How much did I gamble at Ocean Casino? Zero. I came in with my status from another casino. I got the comp cruise, the onboard credit, the upgraded room. I matched to status, and I would think that most people outside of the hobby would probably have to pay somewhere around $1,500, $2,000 just for a cruise like that. Or people will say, oh, it's too expensive, I'm not going to do it. Or they talk about, oh, once in a lifetime travel. But I think we've transcended lifetimes thanks to this community, thanks to the loyalty programs, thanks to credit cards and so much more. There's still a lot of sweet spots out there, as you said, right? Whether it's status matching or finding these targeted promotions and whatnot. You know, one thing I'll say for the newer folks, because we have a lot of new folks that attend these seminars and get togethers is you don't always have to find the best redemption that's out there. I hoard my points, probably like many other people out there. I've got over a million American miles and I keep saying I'm going to use them and the balance just <laughs> keeps getting bigger, right? Sometimes you should just use them. I get maybe you're not getting four cents value and two cents value and, you know, you've got your calculator out. Just use the damn <laughs> points, right? Free is free. I mean, actually, just the other day, two nights ago, I stayed in New York City, and I used uh, some Amex points just to cover the cost of a hotel. Is that a terrible redemption? Yeah, but I'm over 500,000 Amex points, right? They're, it's not like wine. It doesn't get better with age. I just got to use these damn points. You know, don't don't always look for the sweet spots. The You'll hear a lot of these bloggers talk about, you know, all these aspirational redemptions if you're going to go here. You know what? free is free if you're traveling next weekend and you've got a way to use your points and you know be smart about it use them you don't have to you don't have to save them in the bank yeah we all know that america loves math we could pull out the calculators i'm getting 5.6 cents per point on this certain redemption but that's not always possible or sometimes well i'm in a certain area and i'll pick out a hyatt place or a hilton garden inn and still get good value it's a question of value and sometimes there's just demand for a stay so rather than paying that 150 200 cash for a hotel night or possibly more if i can use points and offset that then that's usually a good idea especially when we find it very easy to earn points going to singapore in um 
late May, early June. And I originally booked a cash rate at the Andaz there. And it was like 290, something like that. But of course, you know, I did the math in my head. I said, oh, well, if I use points, <laughs> it's going to come out to here. I'll just pay cash. And like two weeks later, I'm sitting in bed and I'm thinking, wait a second. I have all these high points. I've got some points that I can transfer in from Chase and Built and whatnot. What the hell am I doing? I'm going to come up with like a $3,000 <laughs> bill at the end of this hotel stay because I'm there for like 10 days. I said, this is like the dumbest thing that I've ever done. And so, of course, I called Hyatt. I said, cancel that. Just book me on points. And, you know, is it the greatest redemption ever? No. But you know what? It's it's free. I applied a sweet upgrade. I'm going to be happy in the end. So, you know, what does it matter? Yeah. Well, Dave Ramsey said that it's almost impossible to use airline miles and that you're going to go into debt and pay interest to the banks if you get involved with credit cards. So I don't I don't know if that is the dumbest thing you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you found it? Have reports. you found it almost impossible? Is, is it all over? Should we just cancel everything today and listen to Dave Ramsey? <laughs> Definitely not. There's a lot of good stuff that's still out there. And I you, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a park high guy, right? I'll use it at the good places and whatnot. But you know, sometimes you just got to burn these points and, and move on because you don't know when your next nice trip is going to be and whatnot. So sometimes you just got to earn and burn, right? Just keep the keep the vehicle moving. Yes, we're just encouraging people to be organized, responsible with finances. And once you do that and have a good strategy and pay your balances in yeah. full and keep track of what you need to, there's a tremendous payoff with this hobby that I found. It's it's dramatically changed my life. Yep. You can't get scared a lot. I know I have a lot of friends. I mean, you know, I'm in, in my mid thirties here and I've got a lot of friends that are scared of credit cards. Oh, I just have a debit card or I'll go out to dinner with some people unrelated to travel. And I see them put down a debit card to pay for dinner. And you know, I kind of cringe. I say, well, where did this go wrong? Right? <laughs> who, 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 didn't explain who hurt you? <laughs> yeah, right. Who hurt you as a kid? The other day, it was funny. I was two months ago, I'm walking through Beverly Hills. I was out there for a conference that it's related to the FTUs. It's a loyalty conference. And I'm walking down, I don't know what road it was, just kind of killing time. And I see these four or five kind of young professionals they're paying for dinner of course this is beverly hills i'm sure the you know price per person was well over like a 100 bucks just for a lunch and i see them put down a platinum card but four or five of them all put down a platinum card and i'm cringing i'm thinking wait a second you're only getting one point per dollar what the hell are you doing <laughs> and i just wanted to like strangle this guy sitting at this at this table and you know you, you can do this any number of ways right a debit card is bad but equally just as bad as using a card that's only going to get you one point per dollar <laughs> the levels of bad this often happens at the poker table when bad players criticize other players for being right. terrible <laughs> yeah. this is like yeah the debit card's bad one x on the platinum is bad unless they're working on a sign up bonus or a retention offer or it's like right. an extra au bonus or something but probably right. not like former podcast guest mark Konchinski has seen all kinds of shenanigans with his uh, previous employer and like people putting payments for cars on a Cabela's MasterCard. It's like, oh no, what's that? It's like Dave Ramsey where he goes in the kitchen nightmares like, what is that? What is that? You call that food? <laughs> it's like, I think of that as like credit card shaming here, you know? It's like, I, what are you, you going to get off a Cabela's MasterCard? Now I'm kind of intrigued. Ooh, well, like a free, maybe like uh, 1% back in store rewards maybe. Right. <laughs> oh, good. Pay, pay for your car and you get a free, uh, you know, fishing pole or, or sleeping bag or something i don't know does that work <laughs> yeah like at, at that point for people who just don't want much involvement with the game for whatever reason like i suppose they just be better with an altitude reserve getting 3x or 4.5 percent back on mobile pay or using a two percent cashback card rather than a store card for 1x and i think that's another criticism of the hobby is that oh it's it sounds like too much effort it's not enough payoff well if you have a bad strategy, it's not going to be a good payoff. But even at a low level of commitment, I still think that there's a lot to be had from this. Yeah, there's there's totally a lot of value there. And I think you just got to be smart about it. You know, I, I kind of criticize these kids sitting around this table playing with a platinum card, but there's a flip side to this whole thing. And I've seen people with 30, 40 credit cards, such as yourself, not leverage those correctly. So I guess I should give these guys credit for, you know, having a card sticking with it. At least it's earning something on there. Because <laughs> I know people that have made mistakes even with plenty of credit cards. So it, it can go both ways. So it's just about gradually building up, making sure to maximize optimize or get close to it in some ways is that's an elusive thing as you were mentioning about well every redemption can't be this like super eight cent per point yeah putting a good amount of effort and 
I've also heard a criticism of, oh, well, I don't have all the time that you do. To that, I say, well, why don't you just start small, start with some of the bigger value propositions, maybe get a new bank account, a new credit card sign up bonus, see how it goes for you, and then decide to build up from there. I'll be the first to raise my hand. I have no extra time. And I used to do the whole manufactured spending and I'd spend time just like you standing at Walmart customer service and getting rejected and going on the oh. Walmart, you know, five minutes down the road. <laughs> and and I, I started to I started to really panic. There were a few instances where I bought some gift cards and of course the <laughs> gift cards weren't loaded correctly. There was no money on them and I have to call uh -oh. you know customer service and get somebody in the Philippines on the phone who was clearly yep, yep. not there to help you. And <laughs> I, I said, you know what? I got to scale this back because I'm going to get into some bad trouble here, you know, with these, you know, $500 gift cards that have nothing on them. So, you know, be, be careful for folks that are kind of new to this game. You, you hear a lot of this aspirational stuff. I got Amazon packages being delivered out the wazoo and I resell them. And I do this, <laughs> I do that. Slow your roll, right? If you can't handle it, if you can't figure out what number goes where, don't kill yourself over this. <laughs> But you will definitely learn at the travel and adventure show how to start with a lot of these things, how to scale up. And in addition to my presentation, of course, there'll be other speakers. So who are some of the other speakers? We've got Matthew Clint, uh, who writes the blog Live and Let's Fly. Uh, Matthew's a good friend of mine. He's a real knowledgeable uh, guy. He's the expert when it comes to United. I mean, if you've got a question about United Airlines, there is no better person to go to in this world than Matthew. And he knows every loophole, every fair code, every whatever. So he's going to be talking about United and is mileage plus the right program for you. And, you know, just kind of a side note, I, I think that's going to be a super valuable session in this kind of day and age, right? We've got Alaska, we've got American, we've got Delta. I've seen a lot of people recently, maybe I'm biased and I don't know what Facebook groups I'm looking in, but I see a lot of folks saying, you know what, I'm going to try United. And I'm sure there's equally amount of people out there saying, oh, I'm jumping to Delta or I'm jumping to America. I don't know. I just have this like weird perception of things that I do see a lot of people going in the direction of United. So maybe there's something there that I'm missing out on. So I think his session will be pretty good. We've got Derek Dye and Sarah Dye talking about new Alaska mileage charts, partners, and also on Alaska and how to leverage those. So that'll be uh, good because there's a lot of value still left in Alaska. For lunch, we do a just FYI, we do a lunch uh, at the um, conference venue itself. So there'll be a break in there and there'll be a buffet and whatnot. So if you if you get a ticket, everything's sort of all inclusive for that day. After that, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with travel irregularities. So there was a seminar two, three months ago, the Chicago seminars, if anyone's familiar, where I did a session on when things go wrong. It's not if they're going to go wrong, they will go wrong. <laughs> flight will get canceled, you'll get delayed, you get stuck somewhere, whatever. So we kind of cover it. All fraud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've covered a bunch of just kind of what if scenarios. And I think that was a super cool session. There were a lot of really unique questions in there about travel insurance and stuff like that. So I'll be sticking that in there. I'm also trying to arrange just cause I'm kind of putting the, the schedule together for this whole event, a panel of DC local mileage and points people. There's a lot of local DC miles and points people. I, I I'm biased cause I live here, but I, I honestly think out of all the cities that I see, if you ask somebody like 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're from DC for some one oh. <laughs> reason. I don't know. All the miles people are over here. And so we did a session, I don't know, a year or two ago where we had a panel of five, six, seven DC locals. And it was actually really cool because they could specifically talk about, you know, maybe manufacturers spend opportunities here in DC or, or certain lounges or how to leverage certain airports and stuff like that. So we're going to probably sneak something like that in there. I don't want to put too much focus on it because we do have a lot of folks that fly in or take the train in and whatnot that are not dc locals uh but obviously there is a considerable portion when we host the ftu in a city we've got a lot of locals that attend so we'll, we'll i'll try to sneak something in there for the locals we've got carissa rawson after that she writes for uh, upgraded points she writes uh or she's going to do a talk on united excursionist perk so kind of playing off of matthew's more general uh, what is mileage plus in the morning? She's going to be talking about their excursionist perk. Matthew's going to come back again to talk about 2024 top travel destinations. So I've tried to make this FTU not all miles and points because we've had some 
commentary from folks that it's very miles and points heavy. And yeah, that's kind of the point of it. But we did want to throw in a session that's a little bit more general, a little bit more, hey, here's where you can go. Here's what's hot. Here's where the deals are, that kind of thing that isn't really in the weeds. And with the locals event, even though they might focus on things that are just in the D.C. area, there might be a lot of things that are outside of the D.C. area that you can replicate in your area. Like the Myelnomics podcast talk about all manufacturer spend being local, but some of these chains exist in other places like Speedway, yep. for instance. Not every Speedway is going to be a great one that sells gift cards. You might run into the occasional Speedway huts that just have the gas pumps. But hey, if something's in the D.C. area that's also in Pennsylvania or maybe Michigan yep. or some other places, you can learn the patterns, learn what to look for and see that that works in your area as well. Yeah, that's that's a great, great comment. And actually, you know, kind of piggybacking off that, I know I have a lot of friends that know something works in a particular area and they're not from that area. And they'll make a special trip to come out because it's so <laughs> worth it. The world tour. Right. I guess that's kind of first world <laughs> problems. But if you're, if you're oh. somewhere to manufacture spend or go to a Kroger or whatever. But hey, I know what happens. And I think those people are insane, but I'm, I'm insane uh, in other ways, so I guess I can't comment too much. We're, we're all uh, quite enthusiastic when the deal is that good. I'm planning on next week going on a bit of a world tour myself and stopping at about 10 or 15 stores in the same day, so we'll see how that goes. I, I there won't you do go. it a lot, but I'll make a trip out of it. I'll go visit some family and friends in the arrival area, stay over there, and even though I'm driving and going to stores for a while, I think the hourly is so high that it's going to justify doing that and yeah. then at the end of the rainbow meet with some friends use a free night as well for a hotel stay so there's a lot of a lot of potential maybe yeah. not everyone's cup of tea but it is for me i've got yeah you know you're not the only one i do have a lot of friends that do that right they burn a free night you know going out to manufacture spend and in my head i'm like wait a second you've got this free night why the hell are you using it just to visit a walmart right i, I could do that <laughs> in new york city or something like that but the walmart know, hotel I, exactly you know I, I get it right they're getting that value back in other ways they're swiping their card so many times they're getting x amount of cash back or whatever and my brain doesn't really work that way i'm thinking wait a second you're burning your free high category one through four to Hyatt Place in Tulsa? What the hell are you doing? You know, but I get it, right? It works for certain people and, and they're they're doing a hell of a lot more work on the back end than I'm willing to put in. So it's uh I haven't talked about this much. There's a app called Casinoverse that works with Wind Creek Casino and they have a location in Bethlehem. So I have the the game auto spinning in the background <laughs> right now with my phone army. So I'm earning rewards as we speak. So I should have enough by next week to get a free night there. So even better than burning a Hyatt cert when I could just use points from a uh, free Interesting. Game. Okay. That's, hey, that's, there's always something new. Out. And that's, you know what? You bring up that topic before. There's always something new. Even if you've been to one of these events or conferences, and it's not just an FTU. There's a ton of other conferences that, you know, even I go to. There is always something new. Always something you will learn. Even if it's not in a session, as I said, at dinner, you're going to pick up a new strategy. I've never been to a conference where I have not earned something out of it right whether it's a new tip a new app a new website a new friend i've always gotten something out of these conferences which is kind of what i find super valuable and we also have mgm national harbor kind of in the area yeah of the event uh, that's probably from from downtown dc i don't know what's that like a 15 20 minute drive something like that but yeah if you're a mgm person trying to well you can't get nights anymore for hyatt i guess i guess maybe that would have been an easy one but if you want to leverage anything <laughs> casino wise kind of right across the potomac you can do that oh yes oh yes and the my vegas rewards can be used there for food discounts free drinks and more there's one for the asian restaurant ginger where it's advertised as something like a free appetizer or a BOGO, yeah. buy one, get one. But they just outright load comps to your account and you can get whatever you want. So I've gone in the past and got something like $40, $50 worth of food, although it is liable to yeah. change month to month. But yeah, there's definitely some value with the My Vegas games. At MGM National Harbor, of course, the poker room. So you're going to the event, you can make a bigger trip out of it and maybe go to the casino before or after. So I like the area, maybe some uh, historical sites as well. I was going to say, I'm a local, and I actually have never been to that MGM over there. Oh, the wow. Harper. Maybe maybe I shouldn't admit that on, on air. It's here, monumental, though. They say it's monumental. I, <laughs> I know, all those damn commercials. 
if it's not the political ads around here, it's the commercials for MGM. So. <laughs> Get sick of it either way. Ooh, I, I know that the, the mascot for MGM has a lot of charisma or riz, as it's said today, but we all know that the Unibet mascot in Pennsylvania could use a little bit of work. But yeah, the commercials for MGM are relentless, which is interesting when I go into grocery stores and cashiers don't even know what DraftKings is. It's like, what, what dimension are you living in? You never even heard of DraftKings? Like, what? Right. The Mar- right. Do you not turn on your TV at night? <laughs> You've never seen an ad on a phone or anywhere else? It's like, oh no. Yeah. So we're, right. yeah, we're, we're here to teach you. Like the one, one cashier one day is like, I have someone who's buying some DraftKings gift cards and I just want to know what the limit is. Like, oh, gosh. So they're just going to make up right. some more you're... rules about limits and like, all right, well. Right. You're, you're in for it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a nice area, the historical sites could be a thing that people do. Have you have you had the tour of the White House and other surrounding places? Yeah, I, there's a ton of stuff to do locally in D.C. Uh, check out the White House. I think I don't know what the, the process is to get a tour there. I don't know if that's one of those things where you can just kind of show up. I think there's clearly some sort of security, you know, get yourself on a list, book it several days in advance. Type of thing. <laughs> but there's there's a lot of, you know, on the spot stuff. I mean, the Smithsonian's just eat your heart out as far as history and stuff like that. For the more travel aviation geeks, I guess, among us, they just renovated the Air and Space Museum uh, right on the National Mall. Uh, I think that was maybe about a year ago. So if you haven't visited, that's kind of brand new, the exhibit space there. And the other one I would highly recommend, you're going to need a car because there's really kind of no good way of doing it, maybe an Uber, is to visit the Air and Space Museum by Dulles Airport. So there's a second one out there. It's called the Udvar Hazy Air and Space Museum. It is a giant hangar, really, but it has There's a space shuttle in there. There's uh, the Enola Gay, which is the plane that dropped the atomic bomb. There's a Concorde in there. I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're kind of like an aviation buff and you want to see that stuff, a lot of people don't know about that museum. I don't know what it is. Maybe they don't publicize it or or promote it or whatever because like nobody knows that it's out there but i think that's the coolest smithsonian because you can just walk among all these historical planes and whatnot it's not in dc itself it's you know it's a good probably 40 minute drive i guess sort of outside the city but grab an uber grab a rental car there might be a bus that goes out there i'm not really sure it's definitely worth it if you've got a few hours to spare to head out there yeah, maybe people use their Hyatt certificates at the Grand Hyatt in Washington, D.C. or other properties, other Ritzier Hiltons in the area. So I think it's a, a lot of opportunity to use some of your certificates and credits at the beginning of the year. Yeah, at the Grand Hyatt is like the go-to hotel, it seems to be. Uh, I guess everybody's trying to rack up Globalist. And so that's where I think most people tend to stay for this event. But I just found out, since hopefully folks are going to listen to this before the event, <laughs> the club is closed there for the next six months. I don't know where I saw this. It was in a Facebook group, and I saw the letter from the GM. It's full breakfast downstairs in the restaurant, and you get an appetizer at the at the restaurant there and I think a glass of wine or something, but that club, I, I, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know why <laughs> it is one of the best clubs that I've been to. I don't know if you've been there yourself, but it's like, there's legit food. There's, you can easily have dinner there. They've got sandwiches, little burgers, pasta, these little salad things. I mean, I, I don't get it. It's it's a Grand Hyatt in the U.S., right? It should be shit. I mean, it should be like <laughs> cheese cubes and, and, you know, little toothpicks out there. Yeah, For yeah. some reason, somebody at the Grand Hyatt got the memo, and I think it's like one of the best lounges, at least in the U.S. I mean, there's certainly better lounges international, but for a U.S. lounge, somebody paid attention. So I'm kind of disappointed that's going to be closed for the next six months. So book book maybe somewhere else or, I don't know, try to, try to figure it out. Although you get breakfast downstairs and that that's a plus too so depends yeah what you're looking for. maybe a devaluation maybe an upgrade who knows but it's good that they're actually right. providing something rather than the uh c19 days let's say where it's like we've just canceled this benefit and you get nothing or here's just a cup of coffee and maybe some like uh applesauce and uh right. go on your own way <laughs> yeah your your juice box i remember the, days when I was just... <laughs> the war the war oh, really? on happiness just... continues yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes but that's that's nice. That's an option. Staying at one of the Hyatts, even if the club is closed. We all know the globalists in the audience. They have all these club passes, but they already have the club access. So that's kind of a funny thing that happens. Uh, maybe with the Hyatt changes, that improves. I don't know, but <laughs> it's still fun. Yeah, that, that I was pissed because I still have. Well, I guess they expired a week ago, but I was stuck with 
four or five of those passes as a globalist that I just couldn't use. <laughs> and now you can choose them as part of this milestone thing, which I think that there's definitely an improvement there. You have an option of sort of getting out of that, which which I like. So yes, and maybe the stars align, and there'll be a fee free Staples Mastercard deal during that same week. And you know, you make some right. stops on the way if you're driving. <laughs> I've actually yep. I've I've done that. And then oh, you get the Mastercards from Staples, and you could use them for online gambling while you're there. Maybe grab some sign up bonuses, bon um, boosts, whatever might be the case. Maybe uh, online blackjack will be available at this time, but I think it's only sports at the moment. Although that's possible to change mm -hmm. yeah i'm not familiar with any of that really so Ooh. i turn to you for the expertise <laughs> oh thank you yes uh previous episodes for sure i have the talk about the online gambling and credit card reward intersection and there's also we were talking about i think just before we got started michael traeger i mean he is just a wealth of knowledge if you follow his travels work website regarding um casino stuff if I got a casino question, I usually text him and I still can't figure out any of that stuff. But he's a, <laughs> he's a wealth of knowledge, if you know. America does love math. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so lots of opportunity for everyone. Even if people aren't gamblers, they aren't doing one thing. There's still a lot of things to do. I say with a hobby, just try to make it fit your lifestyle in a way. There's always someone doing more, right? I'm almost zero or very, I'm very low involvement into buyers clubs. But as you were saying earlier... Some people will have stuff shipped to a certain location, ship it back for reselling, getting reimbursed. Um, I'm doing the gift card reselling. I'm doing a little bit of reselling. So the game shifts, but you can find things that work for you and definitely profit from this and learning more in person. You know what? When one door closes, another one opens. So you come to this thing in February and I can guarantee you a month later, some of that stuff that you learn about there is probably going to be shut down or no longer and then you know you go to the one in seattle in may and there's something new and you go to <laughs> something else in the fall i mean it's just this constant hamster wheel you just got to be kind of one step ahead of these things but but there's always something to get out of it yes you may or may not be floozing to the finish line after the meetup <laughs> <laughs> yes and i still have not figured out that one either so you're 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 talking to somebody here with limited time and i, I kind of put all that stuff to the side trying to trying to focus on the main stuff so i'm, I'm glad Somebody out there is doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the power portal will answer all of our uh, dilemmas unless that causes new dilemmas. Right, right. <laughs> and the travel hackers dilemma is a thing too. So hopefully during the event, listeners won't be saying, oh, well, I already have a trip planned for such and such a place because that happens with my local meetups. I have the greater Philadelphia travel group and people say, oh, I can't make the meetup because I'm going to be in Africa or Italy or whatever. Like, oh, yeah. the travel hackers dilemma strikes again. Yeah, you know what? I've got a trip. I'm doing um, the uh, milk run in Alaska um, on a what I think is a mistake here. It was $200 one way from Atlanta to Fairbanks, Ooh. Alaska in first on the milk run. I mean, that was clearly some sort of mistake there. They never canceled it. So myself <laughs> and a bunch of friends are going to do that. But of course, like a week after I booked that, I get invited to like 10 different things that week. <laughs> I swear to God, somebody must have like access to my calendar and said, ah, he's going away that week. Let's, let's schedule that. So, <laughs> yes, that is the travel hackers dilemma. As soon as you find a good fare, a good mileage ticket, whatever, I can guarantee you the next day, something else will come up and you got to, Make that decision. You're going to cancel it. You're going to do it. You're going to stick with it. What are you going to do? Yeah, I, I'm back to the first world problem of too many grocery rewards as well, because I'm planning on going to Las Vegas later in the month, but I have these grocery rewards that are going to expire at the end of January. So I've been working through those and eating sushi made fresh <laughs> by the chefs for all the haters out there. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Come on, come on, Dave Ramsey. You know, you, you claim I'm overspending, but I'm, I'm getting sushi at the grocery store, right? I'm using my C right. CVS Care Pass to get some T-shirts and sandwiches at certain places. I, I was just in right. Por Puerto Rico. I was able to use my CVS Care Pass $10 a month benefit to get a Puerto Rico T-shirt. So that, that was oh, nice. I cool. could always use some more yeah. T-shirts and get gifts for others. Right. All right. Yeah. Anything else about the event, Miles and Points? Final thought? Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to attend the event, it's uh, ftuniversity.com. So like Frequent Travel University, ftuniversity.com. And you'll see the one up there. There's a, there's a virtual one, too. So if you're interested, we do a virtual one every month where we've got two or three speakers to talk, you know, over camera, of course, about different topics. Uh, but the next DC one will be, as I said, in February. And then there's a Seattle one in uh, May, and you can register for both of those uh, online. 
All right, and if you can give some more information about the Frequent Traveler University in general, people can pay an annual subscription to get lots of benefits? Yeah, there's an annual subscription model, uh, $150 a year, and basically that gets you uh, a discount on each of the physical FTUs. So if you want to come to, uh, I'm sorry, it's not 150 a year, it's $129 a year. I'm wrong. Oh, even uh, better. So it's, a, it's $129 a year. It gets you a discount at the um, physical FTUs. There's a coupon code, so that brings the cost down, and it gets you access to the monthly virtual FTUs, and then we've got a, a Facebook group as well. I think it's worth it. You know, the virtual thing, I get it. People hate it. Trust me, I'm the last guy that wants to sit on another Zoom call, but it is kind of nice because that stuff is recorded, and so you can either see it live or hit the recordings later, and there's a lot of good info on those that uh, people aren't usually willing to share publicly on a blog or something like that, but they usually kind of open up when you're talking to them. So, I mean, for 120 bucks or so a year, you know, even if you pick up one good money saving tip, you've probably earned it back right then and there. So I, I think it's worth it. And you have the FTU YouTube channel, as you've done a lot of streams with Tommy Danielson and others. Yeah, there's a YouTube channel as well. Tommy kind of spearheads that he tries to do at least every week, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less than that, where we bring on uh, some other guests. Sometimes it ends up just being me and him. We've got some other friends and colleagues and experts that, that come on there just kind of bantering about trap. I mean, it's just an hour of just, just talking about random stuff, breaking news of the day. I know he talked about the Boeing incident the other day on, on Alaska, but you know, there's some aviation stuff in there too, but I can certainly pick up some stuff there. And the other thing that we're doing on that YouTube channel is we've got hotel reviews and we're really trying to put out some information. You know, when you want to stay at this Park Hyatt in New York, you're probably looking for a good YouTube review of the room and the amenities and that kind of stuff. And so we're trying to put that stuff out there. Myself and a bunch of other people, we travel a fair amount. We might as well leverage every time we check into a hotel, yeah, doing yeah. something with it. You know, a little five minute video, if that helps somebody out, cool. That's that'll that'll uh, you know point them in the right direction. Yeah, it was a classic MLB clip where the team manager was yelling, you got to give us a shot, Tommy, you got to give us a shot. So, <laughs> so yeah, Tommy, I, I really like the the live streams. I listen to a lot of those with my YouTube premium and just have that going in the background while I'm doing other things at the gym. So I appreciate that that's a resource. It's It's been yeah. entertaining and informative. Good. I'm glad to hear it. It gives, gives you something to do during the day. <laughs> All right. So once again, if you can plug social media, websites, where people can find information about the event and FTU. Sure. Uh, website is ftuniversity.com. So like frequent traveler university, ftuniversity.com. If you just go to Facebook, uh, you'll type in frequent travel university. That'll type up in there uh, and display. We also have our Facebook group, which you have to become a a member of through the $129 uh, membership. So once you do that, you'll get access into that Facebook group. If you want to follow me personally, it's uh, at the forward cabin X. Now I keep wanting to say Twitter um, uh, <laughs> X, X formerly and, known as Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm always going to call Twitter, Facebook, the same thing, the forward cabin. And I write on upgraded points.com. Uh, you'll see a lot of my articles there as well all right so listeners i hope to see you in washington dc i will be speaking so thanks jamie for the opportunity i'll be happy yeah. to meet people in person for the booze after the booths exactly i we're gonna get a shirt with that now i like that Ooh. Get the booze after the booze. you were talking before about a meme or a shirt or something we found, <laughs> after this whole hour-long talk we found our we found our little tagline i like it yeah, my, my favorite's been the war on happiness, and other people have uh, run with that too. So definitely overcome the war on happiness. Get in the game. Yeah, why, why pay for travel if we can do it in this manner? Save some yeah, money, travel exactly. for low cost. Yeah, that's, that's the name of the game. All right, thank you for joining me today. No problem. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for future episodes. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read select episode transcripts, and schedule a free consultation. Support the show through Subscribestar, referral links, and buying from my eBay store. Find the show on many podcast platforms and YouTube where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me on Subscribestar will give you special perks, including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one -on -one conversations 
delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly miles and points to learn about monthly Greater Philadelphia Travel Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. I'll be speaking at multiple events in 2024, including the Travel and Adventure Show, February 2024, taking place in Washington, D.C. with Frequent Traveler University. I'll also be speaking at the San Antonio Award Travel 101 Meetup in April of 2024, and the Miles, Points, and Gambling event, Zorkfest, November 2024 in Las Vegas. I hope to see you at these events. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Music